folks, hi there. This is kind of like the second half of my video series that goes along with the blog that I just posted, which is all that back pain and uh, posture and how uh, the two relate. Because back pain is so, uh, so common and I wanted to talk about um, how posture relates to it and some of the muscles involved so you can kind of get acquainted with maybe what your back might be up to and why it hurts. Um, so I want to show you three E sizes. This is uh, the Agoski method, and I'm going to show you three of what we call E sizes um, that address the that address uh, various back pains. So in my last article, I gave you uh, some scenarios about particular kinds of deviations and particular kinds of back pain and the muscles that were involved and how it all related. So I'm going to show you what I talked about real briefly already. I talked about in the last video. Um, and the, the four deviations were uh, excessive lordosis, so this is this curve, okay? So it's that. See how I just added some curve to it? So it's excessive lordosis that's kind of combined with this anterior pelvic tilt, okay? And that even hurts when you really make it happen. It hurts. Anyway, uh, kyphosis is this is the other deviation, and that's that ex excessive upper thoracic curve, okay? So we're talking about lordosis, which is excessive curve, excessive lordosis here, anterior tilt, we're talking about kyphosis, which is that excessive thoracic, which often accompanies a uh, forward head, and I'm talking about rotation. So rotation is anything where we're rotating away from this, this sort of this flat plane here. Okay, so this is a left forward shoulder rotation, right forward hip rotation, you get the idea. So my favorite exercise probably, and I've showed it on a few videos, is called static back. That's the first one I'm going to show you and I'm going to explain how it actually works to address all four of those deviations that I showed you. So static back is like this and hopefully you can still hear me. Now anytime we get on the back or when we use the uh, flat plane of the wall also, we're, we're, we're taking rotation out right away. Makes sense, right? I can't, I'm going to settle in flat like the floor is. So if I normally have a little bit of a rotation Guess what's going to happen when I, when I lie here for a little while and relax? It all goes away, okay? So this is static back. Now the importance of static back is to have 90 degree at the hip, 90 degree at the knee, and about a hip width with the knees and, and the ankles. And then I'm going to put my arms at about 45 degrees out from my sides, and this is just such a good place to relax. Just such a good time to do some deep breathing. Now, I told you how it addresses rotation. Now you can imagine, if I have an excessive uh, kyphosis, which is an upper back curve, same thing with this nice flat floor. It starts to settle. It starts to get into what we call the neutral position. Same exact thing for lordosis, for that curve down there. I can already feel that starting to go. Okay, and it also suggests to the pelvis what neutral is, giving it the floor to kind of relax into. So there you go, static back. It's good to be in it maybe about five minutes, anywhere from three to 10. Uh, I would do this at the end of the day. I would do this after something that isn't feeling good, like lots of sitting, for example. So that's static back. I'm going to show you two more. This one is called uh, cat and cow. It's called cats and dogs in yoga. And you know, if you're thinking, oh, that's silly, these things aren't doing much, that's what I thought. And they are. <laughs> Let me just tell you that I've just learned so much about how this stuff is really functional. So. Now what you want to do is you want to get your wrists directly below shoulders and you want to get knees directly below the hips, okay? Now, guess what just happened? This is also helping with rotation because if I normally have uh, either my hips or my shoulders rotated, this is going to put them in the same place, okay? So that's why you want to make sure things are pretty symmetrical. So I've just removed the rotation pretty much. And now what I'm going to do is I'm with an exhale, I'm going to send that thoracic curve that we've been talking about as far as it can go. The rest of me is going to go the opposite direction when I send it down. Now what this is mostly doing, and that's, you want to do about 10 of those. This is taking the rotation out, and it's giving range of motion to these curves that are excessive. Okay, so it's bringing back the full range of motion. In other words, if I'm stuck too forward, it's reminding me what this is like. Okay, and it's, it's also bringing it all the way forward and back again. It's really helpful to, to either of these 
um, curves that are that are deviated. Um, that's cat and cow. So I'm going to also show you pelvic tilts. So it's a similar situation. But the nice thing about pelvic tilts is it's gentler. If you want to be on the floor, you're more comfortable on the floor than kind of going back and forth if you have any wrist issues or anything. This one's a little bit easier, and it's also um, uh, it's also it's also um, I'm trying to think how to describe it. You can't cheat as much with the rotation. So when you're when you're on the floor, not that you're going to try to cheat, but your body your body has amazing ways of compensating, and you don't even know that that's what it's doing. It, it turns deviation into what feels normal. So this is pelvic tilt, okay, and you want to get into what's called the hip hook line position. I don't have a lot of room here, but I have enough room. Um, you can see where my knees are. Um, you can see how that angle is, and I've got ankles, hip width, always, always a good idea. Relaxing the upper body. Now I'm going to do with my uh, pelvis what I was sort of doing with cats and dogs while everything else relaxes. So it's a, it's a pelvic tilt, just like it sounds. Now this is doing that same thing about range of motion. This is as far anterior as my pelvis will go. This is as far posterior. And you can feel, I would, I would really aim to have this feel really good. Because when you start really paying attention to what your body's doing and what's happening in your spine, it's like a massage. It's like a, a beautiful conversation that you can have with your body. And that's, so all you're going to do is move the tilt here. Everything else just follows. I'm not moving my head. I'm not moving my shoulder. So again, we've taken the rotation out. We're letting the kyphosis and lordosis settle. And we're teaching the pelvis its full range of motion. And we're, and we're arriving back at neutral in a relaxed position. So those are three E sizes that are doing a lot more than you might think. And uh, any questions, always feel free to email me. And thanks for your time.